Falls. Meanwhile, let's bring in our guest, Thomas Hayes, Chairman and Managing Member of Great Hill Capital. Thomas, thank you for joining. Thanks for having me, Anne. Great to be here. Thomas, markets are rising after November's personal consumption expenditures uh, index, the PCE, so falling after the PCE uh, numbers came in, matched estimates for the month, so hit expectations. If this is what we expected, why is the market reacting negatively to this report, Tom? Well, that's that's it, right? It's uh, it's sell the news. But I will say this report is uh, is actually pretty positive in the sense that last month you were up 0.3 percent uh, month on month. This month you're 0.2, but the month before that you were up 0.5 percent. So you are coming down quite a bit. Uh, core PC year on year at, at 4.7 percent. You know, if you go back, uh, just it seems like an eternity ago, but last week with when the CPI came in at 0.1% month on month, at that pace, uh, headline inflation is going to be down below 3% by May. And if uh, if that holds true, then we will see core PCE well below the Fed's estimates in the dot plot uh, from last week, which are 3.5% for 2023. Uh, if headline comes down below three, core PC is going to be a lot lower than that. So, you know, I think people would, would have loved to see 0.1% today. Um, but, you know, that you can see in personal spending that the Fed is achieving their goals of slowing down the economy. So I think that's why you see the consumers, the, uh, the futures rather, uh, a little bit mixed on a light volume day. Uh, going into the most important uh, seven sessions, the, the last five sessions of the year and the first two sessions of next year uh, is the Santa Claus rally. And historically, that will tell us uh, uh, with some indication what January and maybe 2023 could look like. Tom, it's interesting this issue of expectations uh, relative to, to actuality, right, and how, how the market moves. C can you just tell us a little bit about what the market expects now in terms of interest rate hikes from here through the next couple of rate decisions in 2023? What's, what's the market expecting and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I think, I think the market would like to see 25 basis points in February and then pause. Uh, I think, you know, it's teetering between that 50 basis points in February and then another 25 at the meeting thereafter and 25 in February and then pause, it's all going to be data dependent. So really the data today did, didn't do a whole lot to move the needle from probably expectations yesterday. And that's why uh, the futures are sideways. But, you know, I think when we look at the seasonality, you know, there was a lot of tax loss selling to be done this year, more than most years. You had kind of the worst yeah. start to the year, both in bonds and stocks for a long time. So that, that tax loss selling uh, really extended out. And I think now that we get into the last week, people may step in to find some bargains uh, and that would be a good thing. So we are moving into a little period of seasonal strength. Number one, hopefully Santa can kill the Grinch. Uh, and then number two, uh, we're in the presidential cycle and very few people are talking about this, but so far the uh, four year presidential cycle, which started two years ago, uh, is, is playing out according to script. What does that mean? It means the first year is up on average about 5%. The second year tends to be the worst year of the four years in the presidential cycle, which was 2022. And that was in spades the worst year. Uh, but uh, the good news is if seasonality holds, the third year of the presidential cycle, 2023, uh, is the best year and the best year by far up on average 13.4%. And the first two quarters of that year are amongst the strongest two quarters of the four years. So we don't know where the heck that's going to come from. I know there's a lot of despondency and a lot of pessimism out in the market, but uh, you know we may be running out of marginal sellers. I mean, you look at institutional positioning, highest cash level since the pandemic lows, since the great financial crisis lows, uh, and uh, any good news uh, or lack of bad news. And, and I think you may find a bid now that, that some of the tax selling is in the rearview mirror. Tom, we love to break down with the community here, some of the jargon in this industry. So just tell us what tax loss selling really means and how that could be relevant for the retail investors using public. Yeah, well, in in uh, simple terms, if, if it's been a crappy year and a lot of your stocks are underwater, uh, you can sell those stocks at a loss 
and use the, that loss as a tax asset to offset gains in other stocks when you realize those gains uh, either this year or in future years. Uh, so in December, you know, people really look to say, what can I harvest to offset capital gains and, and sell these at a loss uh, so that I can do that? Obviously, you want to talk to your uh, CPA and financial advisor about that. But uh, I think that's why you've seen unusual pressure. It's typical for the first half of December to be weak. Uh, and then you pick up, you know, around the 20th, 22nd. So, so we'll see if we get that bid. I think today's report was neutral. Uh, we'll see if anyone's uh, home to, to put in orders today. And then certainly next week will be the tell. Tom, it is Friday. It is the holidays. It is the last trade. It's not the last. It's the second to last trading Friday of the year. We've, we've got to have some, some positive. We've got to, have, got to have a little bit of that TGIF vibe. So yeah. give us some good news that we can think about as we round out the week together. Any opportunities that are making you have a little peck in your step? There's no question about it. Uh, I'm more excited about emerging markets than I've been in a long time. And emerging markets typically trade inversely to the US dollar. And as you know, Anne, the dollar has come, come off pretty, pretty strongly. It's fallen about 10% in the last couple of months. And as a result, you've seen a monster bid in Chinese stocks, which is about 40% of emerging markets. Uh, uh, you know, the Babas of the world are up 50, Alibabas are up 50 and 60% off the lows. We think they're just getting started. And uh, what you saw, uh, the last four times that you saw the dollar go parabolic up and then start to ease off, once it started to ease off in 2002, from 2002 to 2007, you saw emerging markets up 480%. It happened again in 2009, the dollar eased off after going up a lot. Emerging markets were up 189% over the next two years. Happened again in 2016 to 2018, during a tightening cycle, by the way, uh, and uh, emerging markets were up 96% off over that period, and then again in 20. 20 to 2021 dollar came off emerging markets were up 97 percent so we think that it makes a whole lot of sense to have some exposure to emerging markets and to china with the abrupt reopening yeah they'll have some fits and starts a lot of infections in the first few weeks a lot of COVID infections right <laughs> the, now, yeah. but but then we 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 dealt with that in the west it'll take a month it'll take two months they'll get some level of herd immunity and they'll be off to the races. And if you've seen the, the recent headlines, Anne, uh, the Chinese government is saying, oh, you have COVID, great, go back to work. I mean, it's a complete about phase from two, two weeks ago or three weeks ago before the China National Congress. Xi wants to get the economy humming and they set their GDP target at 5% for next year, which most analysts we believe are dramatically underestimating the impact that's gonna have on the West, the European economy, the US economy, S&P earnings, because this is an abrupt reopening. They're stimulating like crazy because they've got no inflation because they've been buying all the oil from Russia at $60 a barrel. So expect to see massive stimulus, massive growth, and a rising tide may lift all boats and help us here in the U.S. and in Europe where things are slowing a bit. That is a positive note. Thomas Hayes, Chairman and Managing Member of Great Hill Capital, thank you so much for joining us this morning. That will do it, folks, for today's session of The Open. The opening bell has rung, and you're now armed with the market's information.